Praise the Lord, saints, and welcome back to FFT, Food for Thought Ministries, where we move with purpose in our walk with Christ over here. My name is Rokisha Muhammad, and welcome to my channel. If you're new here, welcome, welcome, welcome. If you've been with me since day one, welcome back, family. This is our segment on God commands at a glance. God commands at a glance, okay? And what we do in this segment is go over the 1,050 commands in the New Testament for Christians to obey, all right? These are the commands that we should obey according to the New Testament. All right, so we've been chucking along for this for over a year now, and we are currently on, let's move it on down over here. We are currently on week 54, all right, week 54. And what we do is just go over these commands. I think we're going to do seven scriptures today or six scriptures today. And then we're going to move on. So these scriptures are the commands according to the New Testament. And if you do not have a Dake study Bible, D-A-K-E, you can find this um, online for free in a PDF file form. Just put in the um, search engine. Um, 1050 commands new testament and they should pop up there for you i highly recommend you download them and print them out to have a hard copy stick with your bible or your journal so that you can know what god commands are okay so without further ado um we are still working where is it at we're still working out of the 100 there's 100 of these let's or let we are still working out of that right so we are only on pull you up a little bit we are still we are only on number 32 okay so out of the hundred so we're gonna go over these so grab your bibles i highly recommend more than one translation okay get your highlighter get you a pen and a bible two or three, because I like to use different translations. Whatever translations you have, the better. I mean, the more translations you have, the better. So we will be using three translations today. We'll be using the King James Version, which is in here, the Dake Study Bible. Then we're going to be using the NIV, also known as the New International Version, and also the Amplified. And then for further clarification, we will be also using the Believer's Bible Commentary, just to get a little bit more breakdown and understanding of what these commands are. All right. So the scriptures that we will be hitting up today, they'll be found in 1 Corinthians 11, 34, 1 Corinthians 14, 13, 1 Corinthians 14, 26, 1 Corinthians 14, 27. There's two of those. So we're going to knock those out together. Then we're going to go to Philippians 2 and 5, Philippians 4 and 5, and then we're going to end on Philippians 4 and 6. So we're going to stop right here today. So we're going to cover all those, all right? So let's get into it, you guys. Let's get into it. If you've been here before, you know the routine. So let me just pull you on up a little bit. And let's turn to our first scripture, which is 1 Corinthians, all right, um, 11 and 34. So turn with me in your Bible to 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 34. And we're going to read, and our topic again is let or let's. So here we are. 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 34 is right here. Bring it down a bit. All right. 34 right here. So let's read it. New King James. I mean, not New King James, King James. And it reads, and if any man hunger, let him eat at home that ye come not together Unto, con unto condemnation and the rest will I set in order up 
here it says when i come all right so that is the king james version one more time let's read it and it says and if any man hunger let him eat at home that ye may come not together unto con into condemnation and the rest will i set in order when I come. All right. So that is the command, the first command for this week. So let's go ahead and read that again in the NIV. And we're just going to just mosey on through. All right. So I'm still not too clear. So let's see how it reads in the NIV. Okay. Again, we are in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 34. Where are we at? Okay, so First Corinthians chapter 11 and 34 is right over here. Starting right here. Okay, so let's read it. And it says, Anyone who is hungry should eat something at home so that when you meet together, it may not result in judgment, also known as condemnation, okay? Uh, let's see, is that it? Oh, and there's some up here. And it reads, and when I come, I will give further direction. When who comes? Jesus? When Jesus comes, he'll give further direction? There is no note. Nope. So let's read it in the Amplified. Ooh, look like I'm gonna have to see what this commentary is saying because I'm let me read this real quick again. First Corinthians, this is an amplified now. First Corinthians chapter 11, verse 34. There we go. Let me just bring it down because all right, 34. And it reads, If anyone is too hungry to wait. Let him eat at home so that you will not come together for judgment on your selves about the remaining matters of which I was informed. I will take care of them when I come. So let's just read the scripture before because I need to see what is this talking about. And this top and this is the topic under the Lord's Supper. So let me just read one up just for my own self clarification. All right, let's just go up one. Well, let's go up two. <laughs> let's go up two. It says, but when we fall short and are judged by the Lord, we are disciplined by undergoing his correction. Okay, so that we will not be condemned to eternal punishment. Got that along with the world. Okay. Okay. So then, my brother and sister, when you come together to eat the Lord's Supper, wait for one another and see to it that no one is left out. Okay, now, if anyone is too hungry to wait, mm, let him eat at home so that when you so that you will not come together for judgment on yourselves about the remaining matters of which I was informed. I will take care of them when I come. Okay, so that's make a little bit more sense. So he's saying, don't don't come to the Lord's Supper hungry because you ain't gonna wanna eat and we are gonna do this together, right? So I'm thinking that's what it means. So let's go look at the commentary and see, make sure that's what it's talking about. He said, eat, cause I was like, eat. And I didn't know if it was talking about um, natural food or spiritual, but it seemed like it's talking about natural food. Like, don't come here. And then this is our let me put this up a little bit. This is our handy dandy commentary. One of my favorite. Highly recommend this for new beginners or even scholars. It's just that very easy um, to read. Commentary is an all one volume. Okay, it's the complete Bible broken down basically that's what commentary is it just breaks the scriptures down so you can have a better understanding so let's go to first corinthians 
and read it in the um, commentary. The second Corinthians. So we need first Corinthians 11. Okay, first Corinthians 11 and 34. I hope you guys have you some commentary. And let's see what this is talking about. All right, here it is. Let's read it. Love my commentary. Love this. This is one of my best investments. $19.99 on Amazon. $20. Invest in your journey. Okay? Invest in your Christian walk. You want to know these things. You want to have these type of materials and resources to help you understand what God is saying. All right. Of course, the word of God is always first, but this just is a great help and resource. Highly recommended. So let's read. It says, but if anyone, can y'all see? I want to make sure you can see. All right. Let's see here. Okay. 1134. And it reads, um, but if anyone is hungry, let him eat at home. In other words, the love feast linked as it was with the Lord's Supper was not to be mistaken for a common meal. Got it. To, dis to disregard its sacred character would be to come together for judgment. And the rest I will set in order when I come. Undoubtedly, there were other minor matters which had been mentioned to the apostles in the letter from the Corinthians. Here, he assures them that he will deal with these matters personally when he visit them. Okay, so I guess he's talking about Paul coming. Jesus. Okay, so that makes more sense. Did y'all get it? So it's talking about don't come here like this is a common meal. This is a sacred ordinance right we did i did a lesson on ordinance principles and commands and things like this so this is a sacred ordinance giving you the blessing of god and doing this in remembrance of him so don't come here trying to eat this like a regular meal because that's not what this is about okay i got it so it's a command eat before you come eat before you do communion because you ain't gonna be eating up all the crackers and the juice okay because it's not a meal for that this is not the time amen Okay, this is a sacred ceremony we're dealing with, the communion, right? Okay, that makes sense. Don't come here thinking you're about to get full off these crackers and this juice, because that's not what it's about, because you're going to bring judgment upon yourself. So we don't want to do that. Okay, Ooh. okay, that made a little bit more sense. What did y'all get out of it? Okay, so let's move on here. All right, let's see here what we got. So we just came from, it says, the hungry eat at home, not at the Lord's Supper. Boom, crystal clear. This ain't no regular meal. So let's move on. It says, the speaker and tongues pray for the interpretation. So let's go to 1 Corinthians 14 and 13. 1 Corinthians 14 and 13 all right let's roll over there y'all let's roll over there first corinthians chapter 14 i hope you guys are having a wonderful week this far today is tuesday 14 that's 11 okay here's chapter 14 right here and we need to go to number verse 13. Hope you guys are having a wonderful week thus far. I am so thankful for the Lord. I woke up. So let's get it. All right, here we go. Whew. 13, chapter 14, verse 13. And it says, wherefore, let him that speaketh in an unknown tongue, pray that he may interpret. 
So you want to be able to interpret. Let's see. Let's see. There go that word let. I see an F. Uh, let's see here. Mm. Let's see. I'm just reading this stuff over here. It's just talking a lot about infancy who cannot speak. This is what I'm reading, y'all. Um, Because sometimes I'll just be going by the leading of the Holy Spirit. You see this little F? I don't know if you can see it, but it's a little F here with a star. So when you see this F in this Dake Study Bible, you find the letter over here, which is the F. And then this is, should be going with that note, right? So if we read over here, I can't say none of these words, so I'm not going to say them. I'm just going to point to them. So it's saying F, the three stages of human growth mentioned. So it's saying infants who cannot yet speak and who know nothing of sin. Children beginning in school to receive their first instruction. Men of mature age and thought, men of growth and understanding. Yeah, I can't even see. Growth and understanding. The verse means be not padia, meaning do not be little children in understanding and malice be ye infants. This word right here, infants who cannot speak and who know nothing of sin, but in understanding be men of maturing and growth. Okay, so that's a lot of information, but let's go ahead and read it in the NIV really quick. Again, this is talking about, oops, speaking in tongues, right? So that's what we're about to see what it says. Uh, here. I'm sorry for the wiggle, y'all. I do apologize. So let's go to, again, chapter... 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 13. Chapter 14, verse 13 is right here. And it reads, Okay, it says, For this reason, the one who speaks in a tongue should pray that they may interpret what they say. So this is what I normally do. I will come and just box off that specific scripture. All right, highlight it. Write the word command like this up here. That way when I come to my Bible, I know that these are New Testament commands. You see that? So let me just write the word command right up here. C-O-M-M-A-N-D. You feel free to mark your Bible how you like, okay? There's no right or wrong way. Whatever. It's going to make you remember. You can put a C for command. You can put a little dot like the Dakes Bible does. So when you come to that little dot or whatever marking of your choice, you will know that it is a command from God. I write command. Boom. Simple. Keep it simple. I ain't got to guess. And that's what it is. So let's go ahead and do the same thing in our Amplified. There is no note on this one. So we just go move right along. We need to go to 14. Okay. And 13. Mark your Bibles as you wish, okay? I prefer color, pretty colors. You know, I don't call it color coordinate. You can make them all yellow, green, whatever. I'm, I just, it don't matter to me. I see it's a command. That's all that matter. Here we go. This is the Amplified. And it says, Therefore, let, let one who speaks in a tongue pray that he may be gifted to translate or explain what he says. So this is a command. As we speak in tongues, we should be asking for interpretation as well. So when we speak in tongues, and I never did, I never have asked for interpretation. 
but now I will, my Lord. I do speak in tongues, amen, but I have never asked for interpretation of it. Mm. I just haven't, but now I will. My Lord, okay, that's good. And if you guys do not have your heavenly language, ask the Father to give you your heavenly language. All right. Now, let me ask for it right now. Give me a second, y'all. Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord, as I'm reading your commands right now. Heavenly Father, I see that it is a command, Lord, that we are to ask for um, to be able to translate the interpretation. So I'm asking for you to be able to give me the gift to translate my tongue or tongues in general. In Jesus' name, I thank you for the gift. I receive it now in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. All right. Just that simple. Just ask and it shall be given. Do I think I got it yet? I don't know, but I'm going to believe in faith. I'm going to believe for it. I'm going to believe for it. That's what I'm going to do. He said, ask and it shall be given. Seek and we shall find. Knock and the door shall be open. So I did my part. So God is, God's word is not a lie. He said, ask for it. It's a command. So why wouldn't he want to give it to me? Right? So let's go to this commentary. Woo, that's a command. So let's see. Commentary here. All right. 14, 14 and 13, all right, it's down here, there we go. Let's read it. It says, if a man speaks in a tongue, he should pray that he may interpret. Or the meaning might be to pray that someone may interpret. It is possible that a man who has the gift of tongues might also have the gift of interp interpretation. But that would be the exception rather than the rule. The, the analogy of the human body suggests different functions for different members. Amen. Okay. Amen. Be the exception rather than the rule. Mm. Okay. I'm going to read that one more time, y'all. If a man speaks in tongues, if no, if a man speaks in a tongue, he should pray that he may interpret or the meaning might be to pray that someone may interpret. So either you can speak in tongues and then there's someone who has the gift of interpretation, just like dream interpretations, right? It is possible that a man who has the gift of tongues might also have the gift of interpretation. So you might have both, but it's still saying you should ask, or I mean, pray that you may also interpret, but not necessarily, you may not get that gift, but it's saying it's an exception, an exception rather than a rule. Okay. Because everybody serves a different function in the body of Christ, basically. Every member is different. So you may be an interpreter, you may be um you may speak in tongues, but you may not be able to interpret. You may be interpreted, you may not be able to speak it. So God gives it how he wishes, but you can still ask. Just ask. I'm asking. Okay, that will be a beautiful gift. That would be a nice gift. All right, but I never asked for it until now. Hallelujah. Well, we'll see. Ugh, let's go. Let's move on. Let's move on. That's deep. That's deep. Did y'all know you should be asking to have to, for an interpret, to interpret tongues? Even if you, what if you don't speak in it? Even if you don't speak in it, he said ask to be an interpreter then. Whoa, deep, deep, deep. We just learning something today. Didn't know. <sighs> the speaker in tongues pray for 
the interpretation. Never did that until today. My Lord, here we go. Let's move on. It says all things to be done to edifying. So let's go to 1 Corinthians 14, 26. So we're going to be in the same chapter. We're just going to go to um, um, verse 26, which is right up here. All right. Here we go. It says, how, the King James, how is it then, brethren, is a question, when ye come together, every one of you have a psalms, have a doctrine, have a tongue, have a revelation, have an interpretation, let all things be done unto edifying. Woo, that's good. And then this is saying the true order of the gifts of tongues and interpretation in the church. That's good to know. Wow. This is deep, y'all. Is y'all, this is deep. <sighs> All I can just keep on here in my head. Have you not read? That's my inside joke to myself. Because the Lord be like, have you not read my word? How would you how could you not know? That's why I'm I'm learning now, Lord. I'm, no, I haven't. I have not read intentionally i have not read intentionally now in the last couple of years i have been reading and studying intentionally to know you all right and it just cracks me up because i get to the new testament and he always telling them pharisees have you not read have you not read have you not read so that's just a little inside joke so when y'all hear me that when y'all hear me say that it's an inside joke to myself because i have not read okay and I say that a lot. Have you not read? Nope. Have not. So let's go to 26, y'all. Let me stop talking because I get distracted easily. And I want to stay on point. It's not about entertaining. It's about learning today. Okay, Rokisha, stop it. Focus. Here we go. Whew. Lord, this is good. Okay, here we go. This is in the what? NIV. What then... Shall we say, brothers and sisters, when you come together, each of you has a hymn or a word of instruction, a revelation, a tongue, or an interpretation. Everything must be done so that the church may be built up. So edified means to build up. And the hymn, in the King James, it said a psalms, which is a hymn or a song, okay? Okay. So let me box this off, my Lord. The title of this is Good Order in Worship. So that's a topic, Good Order in Worship. All right, so y'all mark again how you feel fit, or whatever you're comfortable with. This is just what I do. I'm just gonna write it right over here on this side, command. Right over there, right under that other word. <clears throat> okay. Highlight this up really quick. Mm, mm, mm. Everything we do should be edifying the church, building up the church. All right. Is there a note here? 26. I don't see no note over here. Nope. Okay. Let's go on over to the Amplified. How y'all doing? How y'all feeling? How y'all feeling, y'all? All right? Y'all all right? Y'all all, right? all right? 14 and 26. All right. It's over here on this page. Right here. Oh. Whew. I still don't see no note. Nobody would want to touch this, huh? None of the, none of the study Bibles want to touch this. So we have to really go to the commentary. And it says, what then is the right course, believers? When you meet together, each one has a psalms or a hymn, a teaching, which is doctrine, a revelation, disclosure of special knowledge, a tongue or an interpretation. And then what does it say? Let everything be constructive and edifying and done for the good of all the church. All right. 
So what I'm getting out of this is no matter what you do, whether you come with doctrine, whether you come with a hymn, whether you come with an interpretation or a tongue, you should be coming decent and in order, and it should be edifying the church, right? Thus said the Lord. Not your own philosophy and um, I'll write it down here. Command. When you come through, you better be building up the church. Don't come in your own strength. Don't be coming with your own with your own stuff. That's what I'm getting. What is the right way to come? When you come together. You come with you a praise in your mouth. You come with you a doctrine. You come with you an interpretation. You come with you a tongue. But it better be edifying the church. It better be the word of God. Basically, that's what I'm getting. What y'all getting out of that? Let's see. Let's read in this commentary. Woo, command, y'all. This is a command. Didn't know because I have not read. Even though I've read the whole Bible, this is my second time around when you're reading there's a difference between reading the word and studying the word definitely a difference definitely a difference because when you're reading you're just reading for the for the whole comprehensive and understanding of the story so at least for what i'm reading i'm just trying to get a gist of the stories what's really happening get familiar with the characters i'm not really trying to pull out no principles and rules i'm just reading the flow of the story but then when you study, you study to bring out the principles and you analyze um, what's happening when they obey God, what happened when they disobey God, what happened, what actually did they do because it's still relevant today. So you got to pick out those principles and the rules and follow them to the T because he's given us the prescription hidden in his word. And some of it is in parables. We got to decipher, look up Greek to get the definitions to us like a CSI. You got to unravel the mystery of the word. That's why studying is so good to me. And then when you get the revelation, my Lord, it just do something to you. When this stuff starts unlocking, you get some hidden treasure. You know what I mean? That's why I love it so much. Oof, it's just good. Be like, what are we going to learn today? I come to the word with expectation. You hear me? I don't know about y'all, but I come with expectation and I'm going to learn something new like now. Mm -mm, I didn't know nothing about asking for no prayer asking for you to be interpreting the word. I know he said it's better to interpret the word than to speak in tongues. I mean, to be a prophet, which I don't know, something like that about it's better to be a prophet. I don't know. Don't give me the line. I ain't going to be trying to lie on this video, <laughs> but I know I read somewhere, something like that. Okay, here we go. What we doing? Look, I already got distracted. 14 and 26 is what we're looking for. Y'all pray for your girl. Pray for me. Pray for me. 14, 26. Where are you at? Okay, it's way down here. Here we go. Down here. Let's see what we got, what we're working with. 1426. It says, because of the abuses that had entered the church in connection with the gift of tongues. It was necessary for the spirit of God to set forth certain uh -oh, regulations to control the use of this gift. In verse 26 to, through 28, we have such controls. What happened when the early church came together? It appears from verse 26 that the meetings were very informal and free. There was liberty for the spirit of God to use the various gifts which he had given to the church. One man, for instance, would read a Psalms or a hymn, and then another would set forth some teaching doctrine. Another would speak in a foreign tongue, which we know that speaking in tongues. Another would present a revelation, which he had received directly from the Lord. That's what you want. That's the that's the that's the best part of having a personal relationship. You getting it straight from the throne. You understand me? You getting it straight from the Lord directly. Look, directly from the Lord. That's exciting. Who wouldn't want to have that experience? I do. I'm raising you know how to see that person. Who wanted me? Me. <laughs> that's me. I want it. 
I want to direct from the Lord. I want to receive it directly from the Lord. Come on. That's exciting. Okay, let me keep going. Another would interpret the tongue that had already been given. Paul gives tactic approval to this open meeting where there was liberty for the spirit of God to speak through different brothers. Okay. But having stated this, he sits, he sets forth the first control and the exercise of this gift. Everything must be done with a view to edification. Just because a thing is sensational or spectacular does not mean that it has any place in the church. Come on, somebody, talk about it. He, God does everything decent and in order. Come on. In order to be acceptable, ministry must have the effect of building up the people of God. That is what is meant by edification. What is it? Spiritual growth. Woo, that's deep. My God, so don't you can't be running off with no foolishness on the pulpit. Is it building up the church, right? Is it building the church? Is it edifying? Is it spirit? Is it growing you spiritually? Is it giving you some gems? Is it giving you some knowledge? Is it giving you some application? Whew. Okay, command. All right, command. Now, I get it. Whew. I get it. Y'all get it. Let me know in the comments if you got it. All right. That's good. That's good. Thank you, commentary. Thank you, commentary. All right. Let's move on, y'all. Let's move on. Whew. Now, where we at? Okay. We just came from 1 Corinthians 14 and 26. Now let's move on to 1427 and we're going to knock out two of those. All right. First Corinthians 14 and 27, which we just going to drop on down. 14, first Corinthians 14 and 27, right up here. Here we go. It says, and this is, we're knocking out two, right? We're knocking out two of them. So here we go. King James, it says, Sorry, something in my eye, piece of hair, but y'all can't see me. But anyway, here we go. If any man speaks in an unknown tongue, let it be by two or at the most by three and that by course and let one interpret. Mm. I was looking for the notes. Okay. So it has a note down here too. So let's read it. And this is the note I'm looking at, you guys. So 27 was what we were reading. Um, I seen an A, which is unknown. And I see a B, which it says, let it be, because we're on let. So let's focus on the B. And then here, uh, well, they both right here, but let's look at it real quick. This is in the Dake Study Bible. B. Can y'all see? B. It says, in public meetings, the command is that no more than three messages in tongues should be allowed in any one service, and that provided they are truly interpreted. The order should be by course, with the first message being interpreted before a second, if any is given. One who thus speaks should pray for the interpretation himself. Ooh. Otherwise, his words may be in. Y'all see this? His words may be interpreted by another gifted to do so. Even if more than one person speaks, the rule is no more than a total of three messages in a single service. After that, they must remain silent, regardless of how much they seem to be inspired. If there is no interpretation to the first message, they likewise must remain silent. These laws concerning the gifts of tongues are to be obeyed as the commandments of God. Woo! Mm, mm, mm. Shut it up. 
You can't just be rattling on at the mouth, speaking in tongues, and then there's no interpretation. That's why when we went to the first one, was it the first one? It said, you ask for the interpretation. So if the Holy Spirit hits you and you start rattling off in your heavenly language, then God, straight from the throne room, go give you an interpretation of what you just said so you can interpret yourself what you spoke. That's why you got to ask for also to be able to interpret, not just um, somebody else's tongue speaking, but your own. So if you happen to break out in tongues, you can interpret yourself, thus said the Lord. Ooh, because, and it was a strict rule that it said no more than three messages can be spoken in tongue. And if the first one is not um, interpreted, everybody got to be quiet. Be quiet, say silent. It's a command. This first one got to get interpreted. So what's the point of keep going on if, if nobody is getting no understanding of what's being said? So just shut up. Whoa. Ooh, decent and in order. Decent and in order. That's good. That's some good information. So now if y'all be in church and people is just not praying in the heavenly language, because praying in the language and speaking in it is two different things, right? You can pray in your heavenly language without interpretation. You just, that's you and God. That's just between you and God and the Holy Spirit. You don't need no interpretation for that. But if you're speaking in a meeting before brothers and sisters, there needs to be a, an interpretation so that the church can be edified or to be built up or grow spiritually. Some type of spiritual growth must be going forth if you are in a group meeting or an assembly. Okay, I got it. Woo, where we at? Okay, 1 Corinthians 14, 27. So let's see. Okay, so we just came from this right here, right? So let's read. Let's keep on down here to 27. It says, if anyone speaks in a tongue, comma, two or at the most three, should speak one at a time and someone must interpret. Period. That's it. So no more than three. This is a rule. This is a command. No more than three people. I mean, three messages, whether it's three different people or the, or... I'm gonna just cut these is connected, so I'm gonna just make these the same same color because these is the same command. Okay. That's just what I'm doing. I'm not gonna write it again. So it's in a purple box, that purple writing. I know that that's this is all a command. And there is no note down here for 27. No, there isn't. So let's go to the amplified. Drop down the scripture real quick. I'm almost done, y'all. This is good. This is good. So 27 is right up here. Let's read it. Amplified. If anyone speaks in a tongue, it should be limited to two or at the most three, and each one speaking in turn, and one must interpret what is said. So out of them three people or anybody in the meeting, I'm assuming, as long as they can interpret it, you're good. And then you can go on to the next one, but you're not going to have no more than three. That's it. I'm going to just leave that in there. You ain't gonna, he ain't going to let you do no more than three. But you're going to stop that one. If can't nobody interpret the first one, you got to be quiet. You got to be quiet. But somebody need to interpret that thing. Right? That's what I'm getting. Come in. <laughs> Come in. Let's see. Is there a note? Nope. Ain't nobody touching that one either. So let's go in. No study notes is touching on that one. So let's go to the commentary. And drop down one and see what it say. So we own um, 1 Corinthians 14, verse 27. Right here. Here we go, y'all. Okay. And it says, The second control is that in any one meeting, no more than three, 
may speak in tongues. If anyone speaks in a tongue, let there be two or at the most three. There was to be no such thing as a meeting wherein multitude of people would arise to show their prophecy in foreign languages. Next, we learn that the two or three who were permitted to speak in tongues and any one meeting must do so in turn. That means that they must not speak at the same time, but one after the other, meaning you got to take turns, okay? This would avoid the bedlam and disorder of several speaking at once. Yeah, that's even in regular you can't understand if everybody talking, be like, wait, 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 be quiet. I, I'm trying to hear what they're trying to say, right? So that's decent and in order. So one at a time, got that. The fourth rule is that there must be an interpreter. Let one interpret. If a man got up to speak in a foreign language, he must first determine that there was, come on, someone present to interpret what he was about to say. That's deep. So even if it was in your heavenly language, you need an interpreter or if it was in a foreign language. So if I'm here, I don't speak um, Chinese or Tagalog or Spanish. So before that person got up to speak, they would say, hey, anybody in here speaks Spanish? Anybody in here speaks Tagalog? Anybody in here speaks um, Cantonese or whatever the language is? then they can go on with their message and then it can be interpreted so everybody else can be able to get edified or built up. Okay, I got it. So it's foreign language or spiritual language, I'm assuming, both. I'm assuming both, foreign and spiritual tongues, okay? All right, Whew, this is good. Y'all all right? <laughs> Come in. Command, it's a command. We're gonna learn today. Yes, we are. I mean, I kind of knew about that rule, but I didn't know in depth to that degree of the three limit, be quiet. If nobody can interpret, I didn't know the details, but I did know if you talked or spoken tongues, whether I was always thinking, um, heavenly language and not necessarily a foreign language but it's speaking about both to me so if nobody is there to interpret you might as well sit on down because you ain't helping nobody man god said uh uh we're gonna do this thing decently in order i don't know what you're talking about somebody better 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 somebody better <laughs> be able that's what i'm trying to say to interpret that thing so here we are back over here we just came from boom, boom. So that was no more than three messages in tongues can be given in one service, command. And then you need to at least have one interpreter, command, right? Got it? Good. So now let's move on to Philippians 2 verse 5. Philippians 2 verse 5. Are y'all learning something today? Are you learning something? Put in the comments, learning something. <laughs> learning something hashtag learning something put it in the comments learning something hashtag learning something if you are if you ain't then don't put nothing all right okay here we go philippians we are in philippians chapter 2 verse 5 okay this is where we at make sure because y'all know i'm in philippians we in chapter 2, and verse 5 is right here. And again, we're in the let's, right? So it says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ. Let's see what it say. Yeah, in Christ Jesus. Here we go, in Christ Jesus. You know how you hear some scriptures, once you hear it, you can finish it, but you can't tell, you, you don't know where it's at in the Bible, but you know that's the word. I do that a lot. If somebody started scripture, I might can finish it, but I can't tell you a book of the verse. <laughs> At least not yet. Not yet. But if you start one, I could probably finish it, but I won't be able to tell you where it's at. But I know that that's, that's the word. I know that's, that's in the Bible somewhere. Like that one. I knew that. 
I knew that one, y'all. Y'all probably did too. <sighs> okay, let's go here to the NIV and read it. Ooh, that was good. You want to have a mind like Christ Jesus. Woo! Mm-mm-mm. Let me go. Okay, y'all gotta go to Philippians here. Let's go to Philippians. Philippians chapter 2, verse 5. Right here for you now, son. Is it 5? 2, verse 5. Okay, yep. In your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ. Command. Command in your relationships with one another. Have the same mindset as Christ Jesus. Let that sink in. Meditate that. Let that sink in, y'all. Let that sink in. Command. We hear it. We hear this all the time. Let me say it again, because, you know, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. So I'm going to say it again, because the more we hear, the more faith comes. Here we go. In your relationships with one another, meaning you and me, brothers and sisters in Christ, in your relationships with one another, we should what? Have the same mindset as Christ Jesus. How many of us have the same mindset as Christ Jesus? Are we over there judging? We over there condemning? We over there accusing? Come on. Or are we having the same mindset as Christ? Command. This is a command. I'm guilty. I don't always have a mindset of Christ. I don't. Lord, help me. Help me, Father, to have, the, to have a mindset like you, Father. Help me to have a mindset like you. In Jesus' name. In all my relationships, Father God. And your relationships with one another have the same mindset as Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. Come in. Who asking for that in prayer? Are you asking to have a mind like Christ in prayer? I know I'm asking to make my clean my heart. I don't necessarily ask for that. So now I need to add that in. I mean, on a more regular basis and just receive. I need to add that into my prayer list now. Lord, give me a mind like you. We know that. We know that. We know we're supposed to be having a mindset less Christ, like Christ, but do we pray for it? How many of y'all praying for it? Because I really wasn't praying for it like that intentionally. I'm just, I wasn't. I'm just being, a, I'm just keeping it real. Oh, Lord. Okay, let me focus because that got me a little shook. <laughs> Y'all know how these, these scriptures do me. Let's go to Philippians. Y'all know I got to take a minute sometimes to soak this word up. So just bear with your girl. I'll be, um, I'll be just having a moment right on camera. I'll be forgetting I'm filming. But it is what it is. When it hits you, it hits you. Right? Two, Philippians 2 and 5. Okay, so that's Philippians 1. Okay, Philippians 2, verse 5. All right, so here we go. It says, have the same attitude in yourselves, which was in Christ Jesus. Look to him as your example and selfless humility. Mm, mm, mm. That's why I love to amplify it. Those extra little words just help me. I mean, it just brings more understanding. That's just, that's what it do for me, y'all. Y'all, whatever. Amplified speaks to me. It speaks to me. You find, better find a Bible that speaks to you. Now, this one do have a note. And we're going to read it. 2-5. It says, <clears throat> All godly action begins with the renewing of the mind. I do ask for that. 
I do ask for that. Okay. Right thinking produces right actions. Our actions are the fruit of our deepest thoughts in yourselves. Thinking and being like Christ are requirements, not only for an individual, but also for the corporate body of believers. Together, we need to think and act like one being, like the person of Jesus Christ. Mm, mm, mm. I'm a highlight. Oh, man. Okay. Maybe not. So I'm going to highlight that note. And I am. Because this note is deep. Damn. So let me go up here and highlight this command. That's good. Come on. Your attitude. Model ourselves after Jesus Christ. Having a mind like Christ. Being selfless. Always of service to one another. Okay. Oh, that's good. That's good. Command. Command. Okay, I'm just trying to get the commentary out. So let's go to the commentary. Philip. Philip. Philippians. Philippians real quick, y'all. Philippians 2 and 5. Here it is, way down here. Woo! Let's read. It says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Paul is now going to hold up before the eyes of the Philippians the example of the Lord Jesus Christ. What kind of attitude did he exhibit? What characterized his behavior towards others? Guy King has well described the mind of the Lord Jesus as one, the selfless mind, two, the sacrificial mind, three, the serving mind. The Lord Jesus consistently thought of others. He had no tears for his own griefs, but sweat drops of blood for mine. Woo, that's deep. Come on, come on. My Lord, that's good. Hallelujah. These are... The three characteristics or attitudes we should be carrying always, period, point blank. We should be selfless, right? We should have a mind of selflessness. We should have a mind of sacrificing. We should be able to sacrifice or having a sacrificial mind, meaning we're willing to give up whatever. We're willing to sacrifice it all. And three, we should be having a, mer a, a, mer a mind to serve, a mind to serve. Whew. Selfishness, sacrificial, and a serving mind. The Lord Jesus did what consistently thought of others. Are you? Are you all about me, 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 I, I, I? You, you and your three or you and your five or you and you, you and your spouse and that's it. Are you thinking about others sacrificing what you want and not being selfish, but being selfless? Bars. Okay. <laughs> That's good. Command. We should be praying to have a mind like Christ. Command, y'all. Command. You're going to learn today. You're going to learn today. If you didn't know, guess what? Now you know. Now you know. I just love this. I love this. Uh, what is this I'm doing? This segment. It's just so much revelation and knowledge when you just take 
your time. All we got to do is read. That's it. There's no rush. Just read. Read, believe, and receive. Those are my hashtags anyway. You got to read the word of God. Not just read it, but you have to believe it. Not just believe it, but you have to receive it. Because once you receive it, then comes about the transformation. Right? Whew, that's good. Read. Believe, receive, my Lord. Okay, let's move on. Philippians 4, 5. Philippians 4, 5. Oh, Lord, thank you, Holy Spirit. I just love you, Lord. I just love you. I just thank you, Father, for this opportunity. Chapter 4, verse 5. Where are you at? Up here. I just love this. Oh, Lord, I just love it. Okay, let's read. Continue to teach us, Holy Spirit. Teach us today. Have your way. Here we go. Let your, what is this? Moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Woo-hoo. Woo-hoo. King James, let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. So here's some notes down here because you see this S. I don't know if y'all can see this little S right here. This little S. We're going to go down here and see what this S talking about. It says, um, mildness, patience, kindness, moderation, meekness, gentleness. Okay? That's what it's talking about. Let your patience, let your kindness, let your moderation, let your meekness, let your gentleness be known to all men. So when you encounter men, you should be patient, you should be kind, you should be meek, you should be gentle. That's what the moderation is meaning. When people encounter you, these are traits that you should be exhibiting. Not mean, harsh, conceited, arrogant, and hateful. Okay, no, no, <laughs> no, we should be mild mannered, we should have patience, we should be kind, we should be having moderation, we should be meekness, which is humble and gentle. Okay, come on, come on, come on. So I'm a Christian, and you up there slamming the door in somebody's face. <laughs> I'm a Christian. And you up there cussing somebody smooth out with no patience. Hurry up. Oh, what's going on? Who takes so long? What's no, 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 no. That's not how we should be. When we are in encountered by other brothers and sisters, whether believers or non-believers, we should be exhibiting patience, kindness, meekness, gentleness, moderation, mildness. We should be cool, calm and collective. We should be able to talk people off the ledge. They shouldn't be talking us off. Okay? We should be able to talk people off the ledge. They should not be talking us off the ledge. Talk about, calm down. It's going to be all right. No. They shouldn't be telling that to us. We should be telling that to them. We should be leading by example. Amen? Amen? Okay, I just want to make sure y'all heard me. Because I didn't hear y'all say amen back. I didn't hear you. It got quiet. It got quiet. <laughs> I love y'all. I do. Y'all know I'm talking to myself, right? I'm talking to myself, not y'all. I'm talking to myself. <sighs> I'm talking to myself, so please don't be offended. This is just, this is for me. Okay, this is for me. Okay, so we're going over to Philippians 4 and 5 now. 4 and 5. Where's four at? Oh, that's just it. Okay, four. Verse five. Here we go. And then do have a note, so that's good. Here we go. Let your gentleness be evident, evident to all. The Lord is near. Mm, mm, mm. 
this command is, this goes with this. I'm not gonna write command twice because I already know that this is a command. I'm just gonna do this. So I know, okay, that it's a command. They go hand in hand. It's a command, they go hand in hand. Okay. Woo! That's a little lesson. Let's read the note. Let's read the note. This is in IV, by the way. It says, let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Every believer is indwelt by God's Holy Spirit with his supernatural power and wisdom. Mm. We can be gentle, confident, and forbearing in every situation because we know the Lord is close to us, that he loves us, defends us, provides for us, and redeems us. Mm, 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 mm. <sighs> this is so good. This is the next one, so we might as well. Well, let me just let me just not do that. Let's read this one more time. It says, "Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Every believer is indwelt, meaning the Holy Spirit is living inside." Every believer is indwelt by the Holy Spirit, meaning the Holy Spirit is dwelling within you, okay? With his supernatural power, not yours, but his supernatural power and his wisdom is all inside of you, right? So there's no excuse to, I can't even control myself. If the Holy Spirit is dwelling in you, yes, you can, because he's all about being decent and, decent and in order, always being in control, Self-control is one of the fruits of the spirit. Don't lie on the Holy Spirit. Say, I can't control myself. No, use a liar, Satan. Come on. You can't control yourself. You just choosing not to. Say that then. Don't lie. And say you can't control yourself. You just choose not to control yourself. Tell shit, tell the truth and shame the devil. Now it says we can be gentle. We can be confident and forbearing in every situation. Not when it's feasible, but in every situation, no matter what it looked like. Because what? We know the Lord is close to us. Why is he close to us? Because he's living within us. That's close, close. That's close, 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 right? And what? He loves us. He defends us. He provides for us. And he redeems us. What? Come in. <laughs> Come in. Let's read it in the Amplified. <sighs> y'all we almost done uh, uh, the next one is right below it I should just knock them out but I'm gonna just stick to my routine and just do it, do it the way I normally do it four and five where we at F Philippians four this is Philippians two Philippians three Philippians four five is over here and there ain't no note on this one, but that's okay. We're going to read the commentary anyway. See, this is a command. Let's read this. Let your gentle spirit, your graciousness, unselfishness, your mercy, your tolerance, and your patience be known to all people. The Lord is near. Come on now. That's good. Ain't it? We got to have a mind like Christ. Christ possesses all these. And if the Holy Spirit is dwelling within us, we possess it too. We just need to act on it, right? Tap into it. Not saying what God didn't say. God said we have self-control. So why are we saying, I can't control myself? Yes, you can. You just choose not to. Don't come in agreement with that lie from the pit of hell. The enemy is getting you to say that. So you can act up and, and please the flesh. You can control yourself. You can control your mouth. You can. You just choosing not to. 
Get your emotions under control, right? You should be patient. You should be agitated and irritated in the store. Oh, when they go hurry up, huh? No, shh. Have some patience. Be humble. If anything, you should let somebody go ahead of you. <laughs> that's being that's being kind. You got you got a whole basket worth of stuff. You see somebody with a loaf of bread, you just go. You ain't gonna say go ahead of me, ma'am. It's okay. Go ahead of me, sir. Mm -mm. You gonna wait? <laughs> you wrong. You wrong. Why you gonna make them wait when they just got a loaf of bread or a can of soda? You got a whole basket full of stuff, but you gonna make them wait? You ain't gonna say, oh, go ahead. You only got one item. Come on. Come on. Stop being selfish. Let them go ahead of you. Don't make them wait another 10 minutes for your grocery. Get, let them go on and get on about their business. Be kind. Be generous. Be unselfish. Be have some mercy. Have some patience. I don't know. Anyway, it's a command. I'm just going to write right here big so I know all this is a command. All together. Right? Boom. Now, we on our last one, y'all. Let's go to the commentary. Where we at? We already at an hour. So, actually, yep, an hour. So, let's get this done. Ooh, this is so good to me. I learn something every time. I just love it. I love it. Four and five. Pull this up so I can't turn the pages right so close. Let's see. Starting down here. Bring it back down so we can read. Philippians 4 verse 5. Now Paul urges them to let their gentleness be known to all men. This has also been translated yieldedness, sweet reasonableness, and willingness to give up one's own way. The difficulty does not lie in understanding what is meant by in obeying the precepts to all men. The Lord is at hand may mean that the Lord is now present or that the Lord's coming is near. Both are true, though we favor the latter view. Mm, mm, mm. Mm, mm, mm. That's good. That's good. We, Paul urges us to let our gentleness be known to all men. You got to show it. Actions, what they say is greater than words, right? Actions, show me. I can show you better than I can tell you. Ain't that what we say? Don't tell me you love me. Show me you love me, right? Oof. All right. Let's go to our last scripture. We done. We out. We out. We out. We out. We out. My Lord, help us, Father. Okay, this is our last one. We just came from four. We like I said, we could have just went on down to five, but now we're doing it now. Let's go on over to Philippians four and six. King James, Philippians four and six. Mm-hmm. All right, here we go. King James, be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. We've done this one already. We've done this one already. Mm, we've done this one already, so that's good. So where is my NIV? I'm just going to read one down. It should already be highlighted because we've done it. Oh, let me not even highlight this one. I'm just going to drop down one. Okay. 
Command. We're gonna do it like this. So I know that's a command, both of them. Okay. Here we go. Who being in very nature, God did not consider equality with good, I mean, with God something to use to his own advantage. Is this what this book say? The one I want? These two. I'm bad, y'all. I need to be in four. Four. I need to be in four, not two. Sorry. Where we at? Where we at? Four. See, it's already marked. There it is. I know it's kind of crazy looking, but let's read it. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. Period. Here's a note. Did y'all let me read that one more time? Because it's giving us instructions here. Listen, listen, Linda, listen. Do not be anxious about what? Anything. Do not be anxious about anything. But in every situation, whatever that thing you anxious about that you shouldn't be anxious about, whatever the situation is, you need to go into prayer right then by prayer, comma, I'm putting a comma there and petition. So you need to pray and ask. Petition is asking something, right? You're petitioning the court. You're petitioning God. You're giving you you're bringing your request forth. So by prayer and petition. So those are two things you need to do. Then it says with thanksgiving. So you need to be thankful about this prayer and this petition that you're presenting your request to the Lord. So that's three things. This So you have to do this stuff in order or it ain't going to work. This is what the word is about. Following instructions, being able to pull these things out. You just don't pray, but you got to have your petition too. And you got to come with Thanksgiving. If you ain't doing all three, they ain't coming together because it's saying this is, this is the formula. This is the formula by prayer and petition with Thanksgiving. With Thanksgiving, if you're living in Thanksgiving now, that's why the prayer and petition ain't coming coming to pass. That's why this request is not being answered because you didn't come with the Thanksgiving part. Whew. Come on. Okay. I think y'all get it. Let's read this. Number six. We almost done. Again, I'm just keeping on reading it because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation... For the people in the back, every situation by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God. Don't leave out this with thanksgiving part. Okay. It is no wonder that we feel apprehensive when we measure our troubles against our ability to handle them. Anxiety, however, disappears when we learn to take our concern to God. Come on. He is the only one who has the power, come on, and wisdom, say it again, to deal with every issue perfectly. This is why we stand tallest and strongest on our knees. When we are submitted to the one who always works in our best interests, we know we have absolutely nothing to fear. Thank you, Father. Why are you anxious? What are you nervous about? You getting a job? Did they give you the house? You going on an interview? You have confidence that God is not going to withhold no good thing from you. You speak that and get that thinking, <laughs> thinking out your head about whatever the enemy is putting in your head to make you anxious. You find the word of God and replace it. Why am I anxious? Why? The Lord said he will withhold no good thing from me, Right? Greater is he that's in me than he that is in the world. I am an overcomer, right? You start speaking, I'm the head, not the tail. I'm above, not beneath. Come on. I'm blessed coming in. I'm blessed going out. Come on. 
That's what you speak. Get that mess out of your head. Do not be anxious about anything. No. But in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, come on, present your request to the Lord. Whew. Come on, y'all. Don't get me fired up. Y'all know I'll go there. I'll go there. Mm -mm -mm. All right, let's go to this Amplified. Come on, y'all. Command. It's already four and five. Here is already marked up. We already did it. Did I read this already? No, not this one. Here we go. Do not be anxious or worried about anything. How you gonna pay your bills? How you gonna eat? Gas prices? Uh, college tuition? Whatever. Look. This war that's going on. Do not be anxious or worried about anything. I'm going to say it again. Do not be anxious or worried about anything. But in everything, every circumstance and situation, by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, continue to make your specific request known to God. Whatever that thing is that you is worried about, give it to him. Make your request known. Find it in scripture where he's already said it's come to pass. Because that's your faith. Your faith is God's word. It's impossible to please God without his word, which is your faith. That is your currency in heaven. Okay? He only speak his language, not your babbling. Find his word. Give it back to him regarding your situation. Period. It's that simple. Find your situation in these scriptures and give God back his word. And you stand on that thing because he, his word will not come back void. He ain't got to answer your word. His word will not come back void. That's why you got to find his word, give it back to him because that's the currency of heaven. That's how we operate. You got to give him back his words. Now you have what? The, the angels are only going to hearken to the voice of God which is his word. So if you're speaking his word, now you're dispatching your angels, your ministering angels that he has watching over you to go bring that thing to pass and tap into your heavenly, your spiritual gifts that's already stored up for you in heaven. Now you can tap into them because you're speaking his word, which is the key to unlock the stuff, right? You got to know how to operate in kingdom. You got to know how to operate. This faith is God's word, which is Jesus Come on, get that in your head. You got to understand that part. You got to understand that. You have to understand that your faith is the word of God, believing the word of God, finding your situation in these scriptures, giving God back his word will unlock your angels to start working on your behalf because now they have to do what the word says. Not your babbling, not your snotting, not your crying. Find your situation in this word. If you don't know how to do that, Google it. Find that scripture, stand on that word, give it back to God. Now you in need of patience, okay? So that thing can come on and manifest before you. I'm telling you, it's powerful and it works. You just got to know how to work it. And we through. We are done. Let's go to this commentary so I can close out. Good word today. Good word today. Come on. Commands at a glance. Whew, my Lord, I just thank you, Lord, for your word. Here we go. Okay. Oh, I keep going up and down when I know. Here we go. Y'all see? All right. <clears throat> Whew. Is it really possible for a Christian to be anxious for nothing? Is it possible as long as we have the resource of believing prayer, the rest of the verse goes on to explain how our lives can be free from sinful fretting, meaning worry. Fretting means worry. Everything should be taken to the Lord in prayer. Everything, meaning everything. Come on. 
This is nothing. I mean, there is nothing too great or small for his loving care. When I say everything, everything down to what you're going to eat, what you're going to wear, um, how much gas you should get in your car, paying your bills, getting credit cards, relationships, marriage, everything, everything. Acknowledge him in all your ways. Acknowledge him in all your ways. Everything you take to him and wait for an answer to move. That's how you be led. That's how you walk in the spirit continuously. Not in your own way, because a way may seem right to man leads to destruction and death. You better take it to him before you bust a move. You better and wait. And if he don't give you an answer, he's in control of all time and everything. So it ain't you ain't missing no opportunity. He can bring that thing back around two times full. So don't think, oh, I got a hat. No, you don't. What's for you is for you. If it's already written, it's written, baby. Come on. Don't let the world get, get, don't be conformed to the world way of thinking. God is the almighty. He is the most high. He in control. Stop it. Come on now. He can harden a heart. He can loose a heart. You, man, you better know your God you serve. Mm-mm, mm-mm, mm-mm. Don't be coming in agreement with that foolishness. Okay, let's keep going. Prayer is both an act and an atmosphere. Come on. We come to the Lord at specific times and bring specific requests before him, but it is also possible to live in an atmosphere of prayer. It is possible that the mood of our life should be a prayerful mood. Perhaps the word prayer in this verse signifies the overall attitude of our life, whereas supplication signifies the specific request which we bring to the Lord. Mm, mm, mm. But then we should notice that our request should be made known to God with thanksgiving. Come on, with thanksgiving. So once you ask for that thing, you thank him for it right then. Before you even see it, you thank him for it, believing that you've already received it. He said, you, when you ask for in prayer, you believed you already received it the moment that you prayed it. So that's why you give thanks, because it's already done in the spirit, baby. It's already done. Woo. Come on. Someone has summarized the verse as saying that we should be anxious in nothing, prayerful in everything, thankful for anything. Mm, mm, mm. And that's it. And we're done. We're out. Mm, mm, mm. This was good. I'm sorry I kept y'all so long hour and 27 minutes but it's okay it's okay y'all still here <laughs> Woo, i love this all right y'all i know y'all just pray for me i know I, I know i know i know okay i know just pray for me all right we are done we are done with this Let's get on down, see where we at. All right, boom. We are right here. We just got finished with that. So we stopped right here. And this is week 54. Boom. So we will be continuing in let and let's. And we'll probably knock out the next five since it's on the even number now. So we can probably just do five unless they repeat. And we're just going to chuck on away, y'all. So I will see you next week. God willing, next Tuesday, tuned in for the continuation of God's commands at a glance. Again, if you do not have a date study Bible, I highly recommend you put in the description. I mean, not the description. I'm tripping. Put in the search engine on your computer. 1050 commands new testament and bring up the pdf file and print it out print it out go to the library if you have to um download it to your phone download it to your laptops but i i highly recommend a hard copy hard copy that thing out that way you can highlight it and mark it off as you go unless you got an electronic where you can highlight it and i don't know because I, I like hard copy stuff so y'all do what you do i'm just recommending okay Hard copy, because if your electronics go out or your phone is dead, you ain't got access, right? Mm -mm. Get a hard copy. All right, so we through today. I love you guys. Pray for me as I pray for you. 
And um, I will see you all next week, God willing. Love you. Love you. Bye-bye now. Thank you.